Hi, so previously in our examination of the solo growth model, we've assumed that the population and also the labour force is just constant. There is no growth in the population or labour force, and we're now going to change that uh, such that the population and labour force grow at rate n. At rate n. That's what we call growth in the population. Uh, from now on, I'll just refer to it probably as population or labour force. I'll use these interchangeably. We don't really care too much at this stage. We we can almost just assume that the whole population is in the labour force and working. So this population growth n, that is constant. So it, we're constantly growing at this same rate n, and this is exogenous. So that's just it's just a parameter that's given outside of the model. So what does this do to our solo growth model? So we can write our fundamental equation of the solo model in aggregate terms, so I'm using capital letters here, uh, and this basically just says how the capital stock changes over time is given by investment less depreciation. So change in capital stock K equals investment, which is the savings rate multiplied by output, minus depreciation, sigma times k. Now, we want to see what happens in per capita terms now that we have population growth. So to get per capita terms, or per person, we just divide by L, the labor force. So changing KL. Uh, so this is now still S, all in capitals. L just We're just dividing through by L. And again, this final term, we divide through by L. And we can write this as, again, S, our function. And we can move the L into the brackets such that we're dividing K by L. And our depreciation term, this term, is just lowercase L times by depreciation, or lowercase k. Uh, so that's just per capita k. Here we have divided k by l in our function, and l divided by l is 1. We can do this because we've assumed constant returns to scale. So by multiplying our production function by 1 over the labor force, uh, that's equivalent to just dividing by l are each of our inputs by L. So that comes from the constant return of the scale assumption that I discussed in a previous video. So we thus get this equation for our fundamental equation in uh, per capita terms is what we're looking for. So we can write again this in lowercase terms. We've done this before where this equation here uh, k over l is lowercase k per capita k, and 1 is just a constant, so we can just omit that. And so what we want here as a fundamental equation, this first term, uh, to get our fundamental equation, we want change in per capita k. And in the past, we have just said that change in k over l, we, we can call that per capita k. Um, however, we now have... Uh, a population that is not constant, it is growing. So our change in k is equal to this. It's the change in k over L. And this is not equal to change in k over L. Uh, so we can't just uh, change this term into a change in lowercase k we have to be a bit smart and find what this term is and then substitute in for it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we find the value of this term by noting that our change in, uh, so our change in K or our change in capital K, whatever we're thinking of, this is an approximation of the derivative of whatever variable we are changing. So to see this, let's what we want is this, we want change in lowercase k, and as I have just said, this is equal to change in k over l, 
and this is equal to, uh, if we say that this is an approximation of the quotient rule, or is an approximation of the derivative, so we use the quotient rule because this is a fraction, and this is equal to this term, or not this term, this expression. So how have I got this? By using the quotient rule, where, so what the quotient rule says is that if we want to do the derivative of a term that is in a fraction like this, uh, we it just gives us an equation. I'm not going to derive the whole quotient rule, but it says that it, that if we want to get the derivative of a fraction, we first, we get a term here which is the derivative of the numerator of the fraction and multiply that by the denominator sorry yeah so the derivative of the numerator multiplied by the denominator and then minus the numerator which is multiplied by the derivative of the denominator of the function we're differentiating and then on the bottom we have the square of the denominator of our fraction and this gives us our derivative of that function so as I say we're approximating a derivative here and so we can rearrange this equation by dividing the terms in the numerator by this L squared that is in the denominator so I'll divide the first term by L squared and so this L cancels out and we have uh, changing k over l. And now this second term, we're going to write it like this. So we're dividing the first k by l, and then the next part, the change in l, divided by l. We're just splitting the l squared across the two terms there. And this is all simple, just rearranging the formulas. And so what does why, why are we arranging in this? So here we have change in L over L. And this, if you know your growth rate rules, this is the growth rate of L, which is our population. And at the start, I said that this is N. We're defining the growth rate of L as N. Uh, and we have K over L here, which is simply lowercase k. So that is why we've written it like this. So we can now write this. If we bring this changing k down, this is what we're trying to find. Change in k equals the change in capital K over L minus lowercase k times n, our exogenous growth rate of labor. So now we have this term we were looking for before. And we can now substitute that into our previous equation. We have that the change in k over l that we were looking for is equal to the change in lowercase k plus k times n. So now we can substitute that back into the previous equation we derived. And so we can get a fundamental equation of motion with population growth. So we have now derived these two equations at the top of the screen. Um, but this change in k over l term doesn't really mean anything. We're not, we don't really care about this aggregate variable. We're trying to get rid of it. So let's set these two equations equal to each other. And what do we get if we use the equation on the right first? We get that this equals s f k minus our depreciation term. And so with that, we can simply subtract our kn from one side to isolate our change in per capita capital and so we subtract these from both sides and we can just stick those in brackets to make it look a bit nicer and this is our equation of motion of capital equation of motion with population growth. So this has this has changed slightly from without population growth because we now have the parameter n 
coming into this what was previously a depreciation term now we think of it a little differently so we still have investment um, but this is our actual level of investment this is how much we invest in capital and investment in capital increases the capital stock and here this term that we're taking subtracting we call this the break even investment break even investment so why do we call it this well so we first have this depreciation term and this this term is replacing capital as it gets worn out over time it's the same the same as we had before if we want to break even we have to replace uh, the capital that is worn out through depreciation and now this n term and so it gives a, it, we're, this term is subtracting n times k and this is equipping new workers with capital so uh, here we've got lowercase k we're we're looking at per capita variables and so as we increase our population it's growing at rate n in every period if we want to break even we have to equip these new workers n with new capital if we want to sustain the same amount of capital per worker. If we don't cover this investment, then we're going to have the same capital stock spread over more workers in the next period. So the capital stock per worker will decrease. So in order to break even, we have to cover now depreciation and population growth. We have to equip new workers with capital. So that's why an increasing population will decrease our per capita variables because we have more people that we have to spread the same resources over unless we invest more. So that is our solo model now that we've added in population growth. That is how we our equation of motion changes due to having exogenous population growth. In the next video we'll see what happens when we have a change in the population growth parameter n. So make sure to check out the playlist uh, to see that video and to subscribe for more stuff. And if this was useful, drop a like and yeah, check out the next video.